what up, what up? So, yeah, man, I had a crazy one, like crazy car, right? Like UFC, is that, I guess it was um, Fight Night Columbus or. It was a whole weekend yeah. of fights, really. Oh, yeah. From like yeah, the, midnight uh, on. Correct. If you were a fight fan and you wanted to do nothing but spend your whole Saturday watching fights, you had the absolute uh, access to it. Yeah. Got to watch some some Muay Thai slash MMA action. Mighty Mouse, you know, holding it down for the MMA boys. Did we call it? We called it, right? Unanimously? Second round uh, yeah. submission, right? Yeah. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And we called the Curtis Blades just... <laughs> I don't even want to go there, man. It's it's messed up because it wasn't just us. It was other actual analysts just overlooking Dawkins. But yeah, yeah. I think it's, I don't know if it's so much they're overlooking Dawkins. If it's as much as it's like, you know, Blades is the the he's a favorite, man. Like he's that's a massive fight. He's sh- he should win, you know. I Every mean. They, he, it's true, but he, uh, I mean, I was Blades only has like uh, what, two losses to the champ, and then one loss to Lewis. Yep. So I mean, it's not like I mean he keeps getting close, but you know, like he got two lo- knockout losses to um, Francis Ngannou, who's the current title holder. So it's not like he's you know up and down in his career. He just has been losing to Francis. And I mean, let's get in line, dog. Like, I mean, that's pretty much everybody at heavyweight these days. Um, Francis is the guy, he's the man. So I feel like Blades did make a case for himself, though. He made like a, a legitimate look. You got to throw my name at least in that title talk now. And he did no wrestling. I thought this would be. A second round TKO type deal, where he would where, uh, Curtis would get Chris to the ground and ground and pound him on his way to victory. But no, that was just a kickboxing match, bro. It was yeah, and we saw Blaze made uh, homeboy's head pop like a fucking watermelon. That was, that was crazy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was definitely the surprising part about this whole fight. I think everyone going into this fight expected Blades to go to his bread and butter and just wrestle the shit out of Dacus. But he didn't even attempt one takedown that whole fight. He started dominating on the stand-up. I won't say he looked the greatest as a stand-up fighter, but he showed that he has hands and he can stand up with anybody, or he's willing to at least. You know who did and go for some takedowns? Who that? That guy Mark, with the red mohawk. The bone Mark, oh. Yeah, Mark DeCasi. And yeah. that's the exact opposite of his fighting style. Right. And he did it for three straight rounds. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm just going to take him down here. Three straight rounds of takedowns. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I was uh I was surprised by by his uh intensity with how like he we was relentless, bro. Like he was basically I guess he pulled up some John Fitch highlight tapes. You know what I mean? How to win uh, easily without getting he's like, hurt. He's like how how to wrestle win by John Fitch. And homeboy is just like he must have read that thing cover to cover because Bro, that it was like textbook, um, like old school almost. Like if you look at, he didn't throw that many strikes. It wasn't that much. There was, wasn't much of a of ground and pound. There wasn't much in the way of submission attempts. But it was completely unexpected because I don't think Borishev ever. You can see the look on his eyes at one point that he's like, okay, this is just what, what it's going to be. There, there isn't going to be a, a kickboxing fight, and I can't fucking stop this shit. You know what's really he crazy though? Is he trains at a uh, alpha male? 
Yeah. That's I don't know Which that's one I don't know that off, man. Borshev. Yeah, he, uh, mm. and yeah, you you're right. the wrestling would be there, right? Well, but that, but that's the thing though. Maybe he maybe that training camp wasn't a, a revolved around wrestling. Maybe that training camp, yes, they probably were prepared for a kickboxing fight. They definitely was because I think everybody was shocked seeing the grappling of Red Mohawk. <laughs> we gotta put some respect on his name now. I know I at least I do because uh, I did I, I picked against him. I thought that um, this would be easy work straight up for um, Borishev. I thought he was gonna come in there, kick him in the stomach, punch him a few times, collect the check, catch that ticket. You know what I mean? But uh, Mark De- Mark Dacasi showed that he can be. It's a legitimate threat. His wrestling is like not just good, but he can hold you down and make it to where that's the fight's dictated where he wants to be. If he can add some ground and pound, add some sub attempts, and make that threatening, man, uh, sky's the limit for him because he has, you know, he has a stand up ability already. We know we can be he can be dynamic in the striking department. When you add that extra element that you can change the, you can dictate where the fight takes place, and he can win a lot of fights. So it's it's good good for him for showing up some. I mean, for introducing the new side of himself in the cage. He got that on film now, so every, all of his opponents now know that a hey, he's capable of that. Yeah, and you know he surprised me because I did the same. I. I had this going the other way. I didn't expect any wrestling. I thought this was going to be a pure kickboxing match. And Borchev was just going to dominate, to be honest. Uh, but Mark, he had, he had his back against the wall. He's on a two-fight losing streak again. And I think he only had one fight win or one win between another two-fight losing streak before that. So he became a hype machine when he first came out and then has struggled deeply since then so he needed this win bad and he came up with a great game plan but not only did that game plan work it showed his cardio because the amount of aggressive wrestling he was doing and that that would take the energy out of every anybody like honestly and the fact that he could do it for all three rounds straight and dominate the whole time good on him cardio machine right there and Voracek really needs to work on his uh, wrestling. Yeah, he honestly. had um, he outstruck him. Out, he he clearly won this fight, like from yes. start to finish. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it was absolute domination. There was no question in my mind. Like that was, I, I thought I thought I was watching the um, a Chael Sonnen fight, like straight up. I it was um, from start to finish, he basically just like. Put his head in his chest, drove him to the ground, took him down at will repeatedly. Um, Borshev couldn't do much to like fend him off. And I will say this for the, the Kasi, you know, I think we kind of give these guys a little bit too much like shit for going on for doing on these like uh, for having some struggles. Because he didn't really, I mean, did he really go through that bad of a run? I mean, he lost a couple fights, but he's young as shit. I mean, he's a he's not um, a thirty eight year old um, like seasoned vet that is constantly getting his ass kicked. He's a twenty something that's you know had had some success and had some you know some failure. A little bit, a little bit. He's still in that right in there. And if he can continue to improve, I think we can see um, him rising into the, the ranks for sure. Rising into the 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 top 15, top 10, because he, I mean, he has the skills and he's showing he can put it all together with adding in elements of his game that we didn't even see. So you know he's still grinding. Like, that's that was impressive. And like, Mark, you did say it, you're right. His back was against the wall, bro. You you start getting to that two and loss, two, three losses in a row. Yeah, you, they're, they're looking, um, they start to look elsewhere when you, when it's, when you continuously lose like that. So, uh, props to the homie for you know bouncing back and and getting the win. He needed one and he got one. He did exactly what it took to to ensure victory. And no, it doesn't matter if the crowd's fucking booing you. It doesn't matter if people don't agree with your fighting style. They agree or they don't think it's entertaining. 
as a fighter, bro, your job is to fucking win. That's it. You don't owe an obligation to be entertaining. Like, you have to win. Because if you don't win, you ain't getting the chance to be entertaining. You know what I mean? You're, you're going to be looking for a job. You only get so, half your check. You right. know what I'm saying? You only get half right. your check. But that, that was the first shocker. There's one and a half more shockers of that fight card. That was my first Just one. Wait, the only only I thought it was uh, all shockers. Nah. I got I got maybe I got one and a half more shockers to me. Okay. Were you shocked by the decision um going to Brian Barberina over Matt Brown in the fight? That was fight of the night, right? I, hell yeah, that was fight of the night. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let me make sure that's not Mosey's fight of the night. <laughs> no, it's fight of the night. Oh, yeah, it's fight of the night. It's it is official. Yeah, it's officially fight of the night. But, dude. That was a fuck. Bro, that was, that was beautiful, man. That was like. If they if don't you, re-sign this man. If you're in it for the violence, violence was gifted to you in that fight. Like, you you got every bit. That was like the opposite of um, that of. Okay, that wasn't like a tactical, I won because, you know, whatever. It was straight up, those guys went at each other. And Bar to, to me, I really I really feel like um, Matt Brown should have gotten a nod. I thought he did enough. I thought he did everything w- w- that you would, you know. I mean, it was, you know, it was obviously c- close. They had some, Barbarina had his moments where he had Matt hurt for real. Like, Matt was in deep shit. He had to survive. But he did. And he also had Barbarina in some compromised spots. So he was blasting doubles and shit and slamming Barbarina and tripping them. Like, I'm like, holy shit, where's this Where's this version of Matt Brown come from? You know what I mean? Like, he was all over the place. With, he hit Barbarina with the kitchen sink. Like, you got to see everything. So you got to see spinning elbows. You got to see, you know... Elbows in a clinch, takedowns. He did everything you could do to him in the fight. Like every move on the UFC play. Like you were playing the the game. He went through a whole move list. And I thought he was effective in the grappling department, and I think he dominated in that area. Really, I thought that would have given him the nod, but I'm not a judge, so. I mean, they didn't. At uh, least they uh, didn't say unanimous decision. It was a split. Yeah. It was, it was a, a split. One. They got that part right, so it's it's fair. It's fair because they could have been split decision. Matt Brown, you never know. Yeah, and then like I said, like it, it, it was close. Barbarina had some moments. I'm not even gonna like front like it was a, a robbery. No, it was just un- it was just just unexpected. I thought that he did enough because of the grappling. Um, but then again, I think maybe you know when you're watching it and you. You're kind of cheering for one of the guys, as I was cheering for Matt Brown. So, my my opinion might be um, skewed by that for sure. So, um, no, not by much though. I mean that that was a that kind of match was definitely fairly close, and it it was another one of those matches where they it really wanted to see how much they wanted to put emphasis on the takedowns. Because if you take out on take away the takedowns from Matt Brown, Barbarina wins. But if you add those in, it becomes a very, very close decision in my case, which is why I'm not mad at the decision, but I wouldn't have been mad if it went to Matt Brown either. I'm an old school Matt Brown fan, and when I started seeing him do those inside trips, I thought we were going to get like classic, classic Matt Brown where he was going to be starting to throw up triangles and Camaros and, you know, back in the day, submission Matt Brown. Who's like, if we stand up, I'm going to knock you out. But if we go down, I'm choking you out. So, I was excited for that fight. I was like, man, 40, what is he, 45 now? 44? I think he's only like 41, 80. Yeah, yeah. I think he's in his early Whatever. 30s. Close enough, right? Man, man had man. a rough life. All right? He's not retiring, <laughs> though. That's the thing. He, he's not. He's trying to pull a Randy Couture, only with a longer history. Like... Yeah, forty-one. I don't feel like you. I think he's. Um, he should keep going. The game will get rid of you when they're ready. So run it. I think he's. Got, nah, he ain't looking like Diego. He might have no. like two, three more fights in him, depending on who he fights. Really? 
they're doing the right matchups for him though. Yeah, they're they're not trying to throw him to the wolves. They're not trying to like destroy him. They're giving him entertaining fights. Has he ever fought Cowboy? Any of them? Mm-hmm. The Australian Cowboy, he got that, uh... the Brazilian Cowboy, or the American Cowboy? Which one? Any of them? <laughs> I think he fought the uh, original cow or American Cowboy, didn't he? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I sure I don't did. Know. I don't know. Remember, Cerrone got like nine thousand fights too, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he he lost to Cowboy. He got knocked out by Cowboy. Oh, that beautiful head kick. That's what it was. Dang man, like, run that back. Run that back. Run that back. One seventy. Run that back. <laughs> I bet you it might be a different fight now. I mean, or, or Brazilian Cowboy, or Australian Cowboy. I feel like. They're all good fights. Personally, I would like to see. I would love to see Matt Brown versus. Well, I don't know. I know. I don't think it'll work. I've never seen him at 170 pounds, but I love to see him against Dan Hooker. That's Australian cowboy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Australian I think that'd, be, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Oh, I think that'd be a fun. New fight. Zealand cowboy. He's yeah. Australian. He's New Zealand, right? Yeah. We we'll call him Kiwi cowboy. Kiwi Cowboy. Ain't that like derogatory? Are we allowed to say that? I think it's a sports team, dog. That's that's their football team. They're a uh, oh, rugby okay. team. Okay, okay. Because the Kiwis are all blacks, I think. I, man, that sounds racist too. That sounds a little racist. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm stepping out of this conversation. I said something I did not understand. Like, yo, I, I apologize was... already. <laughs> I mean, Australia is yeah. a whole continent, right? Seven continents. But New Zealand's. They're from New Zealand, though. But that's not a continent. Australia no. itself is a continent. Yes. Yeah. So he's technically Australian because we're American, right? So is somebody from, like, Mexico. They're Central American. We all classified so, as North American, Central American, or whatever. Well, if we can play that ticket, then so are Brazilians are American, too. Yeah, they're South American. <laughs> you know what so Canadian, Canadians America. are American. Yeah, they're North American, like literally. You say from like the west, western side. Yeah, I'm saying. Rome. Okay, okay, I got one. Uh, for example, Japan, right? There's the whole Japan, and there's Okinawa. Same thing, but they're Asian, right? Yes. There mm-hmm. you go. I mean, what do you want? I mean, so I consider it Antarctica? just a simple. I consider it as simple as Hawaii versus the mainland. That's how I figure it. Okay. Same, same. Or, yeah, same, same. Another surprise. The same whether they want to admit it or not. Yep. <laughs> same, same. Another surprise, another surprise for uh, many, many betters was Askar Askarov getting knocked off by Kai Kai Car France. That's my number two. That's my number two. Yo, Kai look good, man. Hey, I was telling Mark, there's at least two to three more fights in flyweight division. Davis, I, mean, I they, get uh, it. The the just the the head honchos obviously don't feel it. <laughs> there's like two or three more, because you still got a uh, Pantoja out there. He got a dub over the mm-hmm. the current contender, number one contender. I feel. But they're running Marino. I've always and... been a fan of the flyweights. Wait, aren't they running Marino and uh, Figgy back? They're doing that in fight yeah. for the fourth time, right? This is the tiebreaker. For the time. This is the official tiebreaker. We're at one, one, and one. Yeah. This is the official Correct. tiebreaker. How many times do you think they fight before their career is over? They might have one more. Hopefully, this is the last. They might you have think one so? More towards the tail end. Because I said, they, they, they fight, they're already, they're already on four, bro. And if you if you think about it, like, Let's say Figgy wins again. You don't think Marino's going to make it back to the top? I think he will. My my whole thing is I just want a little more space between this. Like, they they ran it back. back to back to back to back. I, I, I'm just – I'm a little over it for now. I'd like to see some new fresh blood in, in the weight division. I feel like we need to – you know, start putting some highlights on some of these other flyweight fighters. Otherwise, no one, 
No one even knows what the flyweight division is other than these four right now. Well, Askar was undefeated. Four, right? Askar was undefeated, yeah. right? He only had one. He had one loss. One, he, I think he's it undefeated. Was a, it was a draw or something. He had one draw or no contest. One, he was okay. literally. He had the mm-hmm. O. No mo. Was that his entire career or his entire UFC career? I think that was his career. Okay. Yes. Um. Yes, he had one draw. Okay. So, and, and looking at that, man, I feel like Kai did, he did enough to earn the title shot right now. I don't think he needs to do anything else. But, the rankings, you know. The rankings. He number two. Who's that? Kai Kara France. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think he can, uh, he already did enough to get a title shot. I think he can get the the winner. Of uh, this next, this the, the fourth fight between Figgy and um, Brandon Moreno, but I don't know. Um, I, that's a, that that fight itself is like it could, it could go either way, man. Those guys are very close, and so a lot of people didn't even believe that you know Figgy won that f- the previous fight, the third fight, but. They're both technically the champion, so you like you know how you had to beat the champion to get the belt and get the nod. It's like okay, they're both the champ technically speaking because like it was a draw on one fight. I mean, yeah, Marino has the most clean win. What was the first Marino... fight? Uh, the fouls from the first fight. You guys remember? Was it a nut shot and eye poke? I mean, I think. Both of them happened, but that was the draw, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What were the fouls from the first fight that caused the draw? Because if Figueredo never lost a point, we'd never see a rematch. He's two up. Of him getting yeah. choked out. You know what I'm saying? He wins and moves forward. Mm-hmm. That's why I was just asking what was the... Uh... Technically, it's 2-1. <laughs> but getting choked out equals like you lost for real. Right. Yeah, when you have a decisive victory, like not isn't it doesn't it doesn't go to decision like you get a sub or a KO or you no know, TKO or whatever. Um it does I think that does weigh a lot into the matchmakers' minds when they're talking about doing any kind of rematch. You you see sometimes though, like when a, a champ gets a long reigning champ gets like a quick knockout loss, they they can run that back. Because we saw that already with uh, DC and Stipe. We saw it with Cain Velasquez and Junior Dos Santos. You know, like, you can get the rematch if you get a decisive, if you lose it decisively, depending on how popular the champ is, I would say. Not always. Definitely, no, not always. I'm just saying it, it can happen. It's possible. I know one guy that deserved one. Who was it? What guy? Oh, some Brazilian guy, uh, Mr. Aldo. Oh yeah. Well, I think that that was that was by design though. Like the it was the, the whole point was to make Connor the showcase. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Because he yeah, went, yeah, he yeah. went up to fight for the lightweight title, but that didn't happen, and he got choked out by uh, uh, Nathaniel Diaz. Yeah, I don't think it was ever. That was not part of the plan. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> it was like, hey man, you didn't stick to the script. Hey hey hey! What? what hey whoa whoa yeah. whoa! Yeah. yeah, I think the plan all along. Well, I mean, because think about it, look at if you look at Connor's whole thing, his whole career. I mean, all his matchups in featherweight were outside of like I mean maybe Max was a tough one because I mean yet the younger youngest version when it, when when Matt, Matt him and Max fought early and then him and Poirier fought. Early, those were two like legit fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then uh, outside of that, though, I mean, Chad everything else was fight minus the no training camp. Well, I, that's, why, that's why I didn't even add that in because like the, you have to add the caveat of he a short notice, so it's not legit. Like it's a win, but that's a it's a favorite for Connor. And then so so was the um, the Brimage fight. Like he, I mean, he's a bigger, much bigger guy. Than Marcus Brimage, let's be real. Didn't he move and up then, from like Bantamweight? Brimage? I don't know. I don't remember. I just know. I, just I, I just know. The scouter. That's all I remember him for. All I do, all I, all I do know for sure is Connor. I want to say he did the opposite. 
I think he down. lost and then tried at Bantam, went down to Bantamweight and then didn't do well, so that's why he got cut. But, I mean, the other caveat on that, though, is they thought they were doing Connor a favor with Max Holloway because Max Holloway had no name at the time, really. He was the guy everyone was confusing with Tony Ferguson. Uh, the back tats, right? The back tats? Yeah. He, he was just the guy that p- people confused with Tony Ferguson, wondering why he's so small. Um, and he, he was at, he wasn't, he wasn't the Max Holloway he is now. That was at the beginning of Holloway's career. So they, they thought they were doing Connor a favor with that one. Poirier was probably the only decent name on that and decent fight on that rise up because Poirier was definitely on the rise himself. So that was a definite, um, contenders match there. When it, they were, but, technically, well, technically speaking, right? So Connor was young too. He was a younger version yeah. of himself as well. So like I'm not saying I'm not gonna use that as a reason. Like that's it's reasonable to get young you would expect to see um the guys who are young and early um they don't have an established name for themselves match up early. That's that's gonna happen. Yeah. Um I'm just saying that he had a lot of other fights, like the Dennis Seaver fight. He's an obvious favorite in that. Um he he's five mm-hmm. nine. The other guys he's going up against are like five five, five four. And he has huge reach advantage. He's a bigger guy, um, and they walk right into his game plan of counter striking because he's a he. He they're, he they have to cover the distance to get to him, and he's a faster, bigger guy. So he's got he's the matchup favorite over most of these guys, and it's like a fight that's going to make him look good. And that's it, like if you look at his career, like when he went up to the, he was like basically sparking everybody, like knocking everybody out. He had this like golden left hand that they wanted to promote. And it was almost as if, like, all his matches, not almost, it was definitely, in my opinion, at least, that like, all his matchups were, like, curated just for that, to make, to make him not only look good, but um, showcase exactly what is his mystique, quote, like, his mystic Mac ability. That's why, like, oh, I can knock these guys out in this round or blah, 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 you know, because, like, it's like, all right, sure, of course you can. But he also, I mean, not, he, he had, he has a ton of skill, to go with that and a lot of charisma to like get people interested. So mm-hmm. I think that the whole plan for Connor was all about getting the strap. They didn't give a shit. It was, they was never thinking about him. Aldo getting a rematch dog. Like how they all, they were like, Aldo, your, your time is done here at 45 pound champion because Connor's the guy that we're going to, you know, we're going with that. At least that's what they were ho- they were hoping on, and then he did it. He knocked him out. So then, like, he's like, "Okay, we're not gonna risk it again. We might as well just run with what we got." I think he goes a little bit deeper than that too. Uh, I think they were chasing the money in that situation because him going up to one fifty five was definitely where the money was gonna be at, and the Aldo fight was always gonna be there if one fifty five didn't pan out. But he went to one fifty five and then never turned back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because think about it, like he, he was like when you saw Connor at forty five, this man looked like fucking like a, like he was. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was now, yeah, I was gonna do a a bad reference, but uh, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna say that he looked fucking emaciated, bro. He looked all sucked out, and like it was weird to watch to see him. Um, because you could you see what he looks like now, and fuck, can he even make fifty five right now? I don't, I don't know think Con- he could make uh, fifty five would be tough for him to make right now because he looks uh, like he looks every bit um, like he's shooting for seven for one seventy like he's looking for a one seventy fight. If you look at Connor's current body composition and the way he's like like what he's posting, but even back then, like he would drain himself for those forty fives, man. And you would see him on a scale, and he's like, oh, um, like he would he, his eyes would be all sucked in and shit, and his cheeks all drawn out. And he would make weight, but he would make weight though. I would give Garrett credit for that. He would make it. And you know, that's yeah, that's yeah. a whole battle in itself. Hold on, hold on. How, no. how did we end up here? <laughs> because we brought up Aldo and we all love Aldo. Okay. Well, I, no, I, but how did we end up here? How did no, he's easy, easy. Because we're talking about uh, champions getting um getting knocked out quickly and then getting the rematch, you said not always, and then you mentioned Aldo. And then that also well, where were we had, before that? We were talking about like the um the 
these well, the fact that at um, what is flyweight right now, Kai Car oh, France, yeah. yeah. Kai Car France, I think he deserves a title shot. But there's a log jam because we keep getting these runbacks between Figgy and Marino. Yeah, um, finally it should and, be over. Hopefully, I mean, look, bro, and their fights are always gonna, good though. But what you want to do? Like, what you want to do? Let them fight ten times, see who got the most. Hey, you got a favorite movie? My. I mean, Fast and the Furious. Like, <laughs> Fast. Yeah. You like watching your favorite movie? Yeah, but even then, they they get some uh, some differences in there. They add new characters. They take out characters. Come on now, you know. Rocky keeps getting other champions. Whatever. But my whole thing against it, I guess, is I'm used to the old format where even you take Frankie Edgar versus Gray Maynard, right? Yeah. They had the closest situation to this but even they had like some time between each fight they it's just the simple fact that you know for the third fight i agree with you know it was entertaining enough we didn't really have a definite you know next uh challenger at the time you know it was still up in the air who was going to be the next challenger but for the fourth fight i feel like Kai Kara didn't even need this last fight. I think he was already up there for a chance with the championship. I think that we have other people like Pantoja. Even Alex Perez, I think he lost his last fight, but against one of the contenders, he was coming up. You know, I think we could we could have like taken a fight off and had Moreno fight any of these other guys and come back after the fight between Figgy and Kai Kara France is how I feel about it. It gave him the guarantee, though, like undeniability yeah. for being the next contender for the title. That's all it was. How long does that actually? Undefeated. This dude was undefeated. Right. But I feel like now you had two contenders that you could have thrown up into the title. Now you only have one right now. Does Pantoja have a fight coming up? Because he does have a victory over Moreno. I'm not sure, but... I... Not 100% sure. I can check the reliable UFC website to see if he has anything upcoming. No. Mm-hmm. While, you, while you're checking that out, though, I just want to add in this fun fact. Um, Kai Kara France is not French. Neither is a French fry. Facts. Oh. Uh-huh. Askarov had beaten Pantoja previously. Correct. That's that's the one that I was like, I think Pantoja just lost. So and I think uh, Alex Figgy Perez well. just lost. Okay. As well as Figgy. That's what I was saying. Like this is a, that was a big that was a huge win for Kai. Mm-hmm. If you think if you think about it, when you're fighting all these guys, first of all, man, listen, when you're in the top five, you get matchups in the top five, those are title fights, basically. Because those guys are potential champions. So every single matchup you get when you're in that top five especially that top three, like that's, you're going to have to either defend your belt against that guy or fight that guy for the belt anyway. So that's like a little tight. That was, that was a, he beats, he, I mean, he's, at, you know, he's at the top of the division. You know that um, Kai is among the best in the world right now at a hundred and oh, at flyweight. So I really feel like I, I would love to see that matchup versus Figgy. I think that would be a great fight. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens if um, because Moreno could easily win this. We could win this fight. He can be. He can beat Figgy. We know that. So, I'm I'm definitely um cheering. I'm, I'm definitely interested. Um, here's another surprising one, man. I thought Max Griffin definitely did enough to beat Neil Magny. Um, but uh, Magny got the nod. That was a, that was a real interesting one. And like this was like for me, I was I was really looking at. A lot of these decisions, I was like, man, Ohio's uh, commission, what they were with decisions, they had, they had a they had a method, and it it didn't seem really to have a rhyme or reason. Really, it was like I, I don't know. Like, I thought Max was for sure the guy. I know he slowed down heavily in the third. In the third, Neil definitely poured it on, and maybe like I noticed the guys that would look that looked great late got the nod every time. If you did well in the the last round, if it was a close fight or not, like, and you're getting the win, I think they basically were like, 
the third round means the most. You know, when it's cards like these that happen, it's mainly, mainly the reason for this talk of open scoring every time. Every time we have these weird decisions that just about every fight that could have went either way or should have went either way happens, we always have these discussions about when are we going to have open scoring. you think that's something that should come out sooner or later or at all? I got a better idea. No open scoring. Keep it, keep it as is. But here's a way we never go to the judges' court cards. Make the last round un, um, in, in, indefinite. <laughs> Somebody going to die. No. No, I, I don't think so. Not I think, die, uh, Bobby. It, that, that somebody going to lose. For sure. Not I, die so, literally, but they going to lose. Somebody going to lose. If you, if you make it untimed, I think um, the situation where, you get, where guys get saved by the bell in the last like few minutes – if you add just an extra minute or two, that fight's over. It's gonna get decided. You know what I mean? Like if if, if a guy like because like you saw at the end of that, um, really, I think Neil Magny probably does be he does probably TKO um, Max Griffin if he has another minute or two because Matt, he was pouring it on and Matt he had to survive. And I think that's why the judges were giving the nods out because if you just tally in the score, there's no Max won two out of three rounds for sure in my opinion. I saw, like watching the fight. I thought Max won the first round. I thought he won the second round. He definitely lost the third round, though. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? So, it, but then, then the question goes like, okay, if if we continue from now, who wins? And if that answer uh, is, is Neil Magny, if you if they could kept going, most likely. I mean, Max could have caught him with something and dropped it. We don't know. We didn't see. They, the, the time's over. So that's why I think, like, you know, maybe – the format could change a little bit. I know the rounds make sense for, um, like, you know, obviously making like, the sport more, like, um, palatable. Yeah. Well, making it more pal, like, making it more like, oh, right, well, yeah, we have these structures, three, five minute rounds, this much, you know, um, time in between rounds. You can do, mix it a lot more, like, you have the rules, but I know, um, but how tough would it be to, like, have, like, a, the, the last round just be a, like, a, a sudden death type overtime, to- overtime round. As opposed to making it like, all right, it's closed. Like, you get five rounds. For a championship fight, I'm like, nah, man. You go four rounds, and then the fifth round, we, you just keep going to somebody to somebody gets knocked out, tap out, or TKO. I think the, the thing against that is they used to do these unlimited time frame rounds in Pride, and they used to do it in the old UFC. And it just turned into boringness. Like, you you saw these guys going for 30, 40 minutes without having a break, and then they're just both exhausted, and they're just kind of like laying on each other and sitting around and barely throwing in. It, it became uninteresting. I, I'm on the fact, or I'm more on the side of 1FC, where... They judge the fight as a whole, not round by round. I like that idea more. Where it doesn't matter if you won the first and second. If you completely pour it on and had nothing left in the third round, and you show that you're just completely dominant at that point, you can still win the fight. You know? So if, like, one guy was, like, lackluster in the first... But yet won the first round and did, but didn't really do anything with it. All he did was lay on them the whole time. And then the second round, they were just kind of standing up and barely throwing anything. But the third round, one guy dominates. He wins the fight. Period. Because they judge it as a whole, not round by round. I like that idea. And then you take away the point deductions, per se for each round for the penalty cards and they have the yellow card the old school yellow card red card system where if you get a yellow card in one FC you lose two percent of your purse if you get a red card in there I want to say it's five percent of your purse or you're disqualified 
I know why they they score it the way they do because they want it to be more of a sport than what they used to call it back in the day, human cockfighting or something like that, right? Correct. Yeah, they want to people to view it more as a sport than two barbarians slugging it out in an enclosure or something, you know? Yeah, this isn't a gladiator sport anymore. It's a- but hold on, wait, hold on, give, give me give me a second for this one. I want to draw a little comparison. Do you think it is less of a sport if the last round's on time? Not like if it's like a, no. like if it's an over like because it's, it's it's still just the same thing. It's still a fight. To me, it's the same as like NFL if they go to overtime. Like they want rules to make it to where it's like fair. I mean, before like for a long time in NFL, if you had the same score at the end of four quarters, you would go to sudden death overtime, and the first person to score wins. And even if that first score is a field goal, you win. And you might not even your your other, your other part of your team might never see the field. Like you might just lose the coin flip and you lost. You know what I mean? So um, to make that fair, there was always these tweaks, and like then they went to where you have to score a touchdown, or now and now they're doing it to where even if you score, the other team gets a shot. They get a crack at it. They got like, they get the ball again to make that. Whoever t- to make that victory, um, like decisive, because they're so big. Like every one fight in these fighters' like career is a big deal. So like getting a win or loss, especially with the fit, the way they get paid, you get paid double if you win, because you get your show bonus and then your win bonus. And like, see, so you get if you're getting twelve and twelve, and you don't win, you get twelve. You know what I mean? So like. I, I want to. I don't want some fucking guy sitting down eating nachos, watching the fucking fight decide if I get twelve k or not. I want it to be me, and if it's gonna be me, give us a give it all the time. Like, don't let it go to the judges. That's that's the only thing I'm thinking. I understand that, like, for time constraints, you have to have these rounds. I get that part. Like, you and you and you also don't. You want judging. You want someone to go to judges. You want to go to a scorecard. I, I get that. I, I don't, but I understand why, the a bit, from a business standpoint, why you would. Um, but it's just you know, if especially for like UFC, man, like if you're get, if you're getting a fight a flat rate, win or lose, then sure, go to the judges' card because it doesn't it doesn't matter. But it matters, bro. Like that, if you're a fighter, like say, um, say you're Max Griffin. And you won that fight, technically speaking. Or like, if you are on, if you're going by the, the the stats of who landed more, who had more significant strikes, who who was dominant for longer, you know, this is like, like fuck. Well, I, I guess I don't get half my check because um, these referee, these judges favor the third round more than they do the entirety of the fight. And is that fair? No, nothing's fucking fair, man. It's all a gamble. It goes back to we need better judges. We need better judges and judging criteria because if we do it that way, you get rid of George St. Pierre. George St. Pierre was never a great champion at that point. Well, hold on. If, he, if you let his if you let his fights go indefinitely in the last round, he lost a lot of them because he was a point fighter. And without if you take away point fighting in MMA, there's a lot of great fighters that no longer have careers. Period. I think his cardio is good enough to where, like, he would the, the other guy would be so exhausted by the last point that he can finish him. Like, I, yeah, I, but I think, I'm not sitting there for an hour watching one fight. No, I, I don't think it would take a, if, it's un, <laughs> if you can't break him up. So here's the thing: like, in, if it, in five minutes, yes, you know that you even see it. You even see it all the time. The fighters look up at the clock, like, okay, how much time do I have left before you know? What I mean, see, this they, shit's over. They did in the Matt Brown and Barbarina fight. They definitely they looked up that yeah. clock. It's, they do it all the time. So if, if, if it's not going to – that that point would be a, a moot now. If you're in the third round, like, look, there is no fucking time. There is no time maximum. So the guy that gets hurt can get finished because, like, they don't have – no one's going to separate you after, you know what I mean, he's already injured. Like, if he's hurt, they can, you can just keep going until the referee waves it off. And they, wave, they do a, a decent job, at least, of waving it off. Especially in, in, in the latter rounds when you know the guy's not going to continue. He's not in defending, like he's just turtling up. 
And yeah, I think I think there will be a lot more. I, I, I put this. I think a lot more fights will be purely decided. You'll really see who was the winner in that fight, and not um, it won't be some kind of fluke where you know a guy can just survive and then get the nod for the judges from the judges. Um, but then again, like I that's. Of, I was gonna say I see a lot of brain damage in that situation too. So we got a <laughs> lot of fighters that are too tough for themselves and. Uh, teams that won't throw in towels and shit, so we're gonna have some fucking deaths. <laughs> and uh, people uh, just getting pummeled to death. Speaking of that, man, <laughs> do you think um, do you think the corner should be more active? Yes. Like I you... think 100% that more corners should throw in towels and there, because I think they're like the the saving grace, because I, I think a lot of the refs in those situations are doing the right things because the ref is limited or limited by if the guy's intelligently defending himself or trying to defend himself enough, he's still in the fight. But your corner should know you well enough to whether you're actually in that fight or if you're just trying to tough something out at that point, and they should throw in the towel more often. I do think that's something that needs to happen more. True. Well, we've seen situations where the refs were not the refs, but the uh, the corners completely like failed their fighters, or just let them go way too long. Because there's certain fights like um, if you think about a couple weeks ago, we had was it um, RDA versus um, Moicano. Yeah, there's an easy situ- There's an easy case for his corner just going. Like, All right, look, he's not gonna quit, obviously, um, but he's he doesn't even have a puncher's chance to win this fight. You know what I mean? Like yeah. all, all, only things that's gonna, only thing that's happening right now is he's just getting more damage. Um, and he's got and my my guy took this fight on short notice, so there's no upside here from him just getting a beating. It's not a championship fight. I can understand if you're fighting for a title, you want to exhaust every resource you can because you might not get that shot again. This is an ex- This is just a fight. This is one a, one fight. Even and they, even though every one fight is really important, I think as a a corner you can. I think they can just throw the towel in there and let uh, him, you know, save him some damage and some some miles on his career. And then Raquel Pennington, she she looked over at a corner and was like, literally, I, I, I told him I'm done. And they still just put it right back out there. And I'm like, I, 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 what, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, all right, well, yeah, I get it. It's, it is a violent sport, bro. It's a hurt business. So, as much as we want to protect them, we're protecting them from what exactly they're fighting. What are we? What are we protecting them from? You said you mentioned right. damage. I'm like, bro, you signed. That's what you signed up for. Like, we, we can't. You can't go out there and like get into this kind of get into a fight. And then you're thinking about like that kind of stuff. That that should be, you know, that's just part of the game. You can't avoid that. It's the same as the yeah. difference, though, that there's that part of the game and taking unnecessary brain damage. There, there's a difference there. Like, you know, there's always going to be risk when you decide to go into a cage fight. But when you're getting pummeled for three rounds straight and you have no puncher's chance, taking the extra damage is just unnecessary. I agree. Like I think- even the crowd at a lot of a lot of the fights that we're talking about, we're not talking about every fight. You know, you want to give them a chance to rally back. You want to give them a chance to, you know, have that puncher's chance. But there's some fighters that you know don't have that chance. And you've watched the fight, and you're you're sitting here like this should have ended two rounds ago, and that just needs to end. That's what well, I mean by you need to save that brain damage. Like, no, if you're gonna get kicked in the head and something happens, something's gonna happen. Concussions are gonna happen. It's it's name of the game. But right. why continue when you're literally nothing but a punching bag that just happens to move once in a while? Well, yeah, I. I... I agree that um, there should. I, I'm, I, I'm, I agree with you that there should be more corner involvement as as far as like the fight being decided or not, um, throwing in the towel or not. Um, we, obviously, you get moments like you you wouldn't get moments like Chuck Congo, Pat Berry, uh, if 
corners were just quick on the flag, quick on the tower. Right. You know what I mean? You wouldn't get those moments. So you wouldn't get these iconic moments where fighters do come back and show heart and are able to finish. So I, I kind of get that. Or you wouldn't, or if you think about, you mentioned a fight earlier. You, you, you don't get Gray Maynard, Frank Yeager. Gray was kicking the shit out of Frankie. You know what I mean? He did like four, five back rolls. Right. And if you have a compassionate corner, quote unquote, who's like, oh, my dear boy is getting his ass kicked and I'm going to toss it in now, you don't get that comeback performance. So I understand that too. I'm not even going to, you know, you got to let them be warriors. And ultimately speaking, I want them to just be warriors. And I want the fight to be decided by the warriors. I don't want the, I don't want the referees involved at all. I don't want the corners involved at all if we don't need it. I would rather it go, like I said, one round, two round, indefinite round, squeeze his ass out. Let's see who wins. Because how many fights does Nate Diaz win if there's if there's like no indefinite third round? How many? I mean, you know, oh, he definitely uh, wins every fight. He, every he did fight. I don't know about every fight, but he's he majority wins a lot of them more. fights. He wins a lot more of them. That's for sure. A lot more of them. And I think, like ultimately speaking, isn't that what we we here for? Like, look. All the damage part aside, but they signed up for that part. That's just that kind yeah. of man. That's like a, that's like that's like a gambler losing money. I'm like, dude, you signed up for that. Like that's part of well, it. That, that's also why I emphasize that the the camp should know their fighter well, because you know there's a lot of fighters that we we look at like a Nate Diaz or whatever. When he's taking that kind of punishment, and you know he can come back in the last minute like he did with Leon Edwards, mm-hmm. you know your fighter can do that. But Imagine. there's other fighters, like, as you said, the Raquel Pennington fight or uh, whatever, that you know that they're not coming back. Amanda Nunes right. is just going to tear that ass up, and, and it's going to uh, continue that way. It was it was RDA and Moicano. Yeah, RDA and Moicano also. You knew he wasn't going to come back. The only right. reason why he had success in the final round is because RDA felt compassion for him, and he took his foot off the gas. He was like, let me not, you know, kill you. I think you see that a lot, though. You see that a lot when fighters start off hot and they get you. They know they have four rounds in the bank, so they can just kind of chill the fifth round. They're like, I can just go. As long as the clock runs out and I don't get knocked out in the fifth round, I got this. This is I already I beat the shot out of this guy for four straight rounds. Or if it's a three round fight, I beat him two out of three. So I can just kind of coast this third round. You see that a ton. And I think you even you we just mentioned it already. You, I think Leon Edwards definitely was thinking that when uh, he got rocked by Nate. He was like, "Fuck, I, I beat this dude silly for four straight for four rounds. Like, I don't need to win this fifth. And then he gets caught. Now, if that's an untimed down, he's not even thinking that way. He's like, "I gotta continue to fuck this guy up." You know what I mean? There, there is no, there is no. Let's see what happens. There's, there is no like, I milk the last five minutes and then I win. So you get a more pure expression because you have to get to, it's kind of like football. Like you, you can't just run the clock out. You have to have the, you have to have the higher score. And in, in MMA, like there is no score really. I mean, yeah, you, you might've gotten more leg kicks and more significant strikes landed, but it only takes one shot or one takedown or one bad um, transition. And that guy's on your back and choking you. I tell you right now, no commission is gonna do that. <laughs> no commission no. is gonna let the safety. That's what they're looking at—the safety of the fighters. Maybe Japan with Ryzen. Hey man, money talks. In America, man. in America. <laughs> or, or money wait, talks. United States, in the United States. They might do it up in Canada or Mexico or somewhere, but not. What was that? Uh... I don't see it happening. Just because the was that one way they were trying to get around that before? They don't want the blood. There was a there was some kind of fight that was supposed to be illegal in the U.S. and most countries wouldn't sanction, so they were trying to do it on a cruise ship (laughs) somewhere. I forgot what that was, but they were like, "We want this fight to happen with this set of rules, and no commission would allow it." So they were going to do it on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean. Have people buy tickets? Well, like international waters or something. Yeah, where there are no rules unclaimed or waters. No, yeah. no rules. Unclaimed waters where no one can sanction anything over it. Wow. Well, yeah. you gotta look at it. the commissions like uh, OSHA. You know what I'm saying? 
They're the safety people. They're just trying to right. make sure everybody's following the rules and nobody gets hurt permanently or passes away. That's all they are. That's. I mean, if you want to bring the NFL back into it, they're the people that are making the offensive linemen wear helmets on their helmets now in practice. The, the, the igloos? Hey, man, CT is yeah. a real thing. Ask um, <laughs> a wide receiver that used to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers if CT is real. And this is uh, – obviously, this is, this is not football-like chat, but – if you think about it, for them, man, like if they want to, if they actually give a fuck about player safety, that's the real deal. Which come on, I think it's bullshit. I don't, I don't even. I laugh when people say that. Like, well, that's the reason. But like, come on, that's not the reason. They don't want. They just want to keep. They want to have the perception of that. If you really want to get rid of helmet hits and people getting concussions, take the fucking helmet off. No one's gonna leave with their actual head. You see rugby all the time. Like they play basically football with no helmet and they tackle. Just like they have different just technique for tackling. Oh, no. Whatever, no helmet would be better. Um, they might but, have some crazies though that will lead with their head. Yeah, I'm gonna say, take that. Like, I'm gonna take that penalty. I'm gonna take that penalty. I mean, you might, but I mean, I, it's it's still like you can still make rules against it and then get and phase that out of the game with the rules. But I mean. Just the fact that you have a helmet on makes you feel a bit more uh, in, like indestructible. Yep. Like you're more willing to take that risk and go a little bit harder because you feel like I got this padding around me. Yep, that is true. Um, oh, hey, we uh, got to touch on this flyweight fight between the two ladies. Who might be up next yes. for Valentina? Alexa Grasso. That's my half shocking moment of the night. Doesn't she have a fight up right now? Are you sure about that? Oh well, you got you got um you got shut down. Yo, it's real quick. I said the name of the name of the name. Jesus. Yes. Yeah, Alexa was like (laughs) she was like, Are you talking about me? Not you, honey. (laughs) <laughs> the the Alexa the Alexa you are talking about Alexa Grasso looked great. That was she my half shocking moment. Did. Well, she was a favorite. I don't even so know I, how that's half shocking. Yeah, I thought she. I I expected her to win. I maybe not in that method. I that method. Expect her. No, yeah. that was completely shocking to me because because of the method of her win. I thought it was gonna go decision or a uh, knockout. Honestly, TKO, not submission. I, did you expect Alexa to box jo- Joanne's head off? Possibly. Yeah, that was. She got squeezed out. She squeezed her out, bro. Mm-hmm. Alexa was. She was. She came, and it was. She was serious. She, uh, you know, short work, one round. She's like, I'll take this, and then I, she's definitely up for. I mean, where's she ranked now? What is Alexa? Grasso is yeah. ranked fifth. She went up four spots to fifth. Okay. Yeah, she's. Yeah, I she's actually talking. thought she was going to go to fourth, but she's at fifth. Who's ahead of her? Uh, Santos, Talia Santos, Lauren Murphy, Chukagan, and Andrade. Okay. Which, that's fair. I, I feel like she's exactly where she needs to be. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's about well, right for her. It's a good. It's a good for her to ju- get a jump into the top ten. She's in the top five now. I mean, right at this point, she's a couple fights away from the strap. Maybe even one spectacular fight away from the the, the strap. Yeah, I was I was about to say if she beats any of the top three, which is where my callouts would be, I would. I would be right at one, two or three is where my next call out would be. I'd be calling out Chukagan or Murphy. Lauren Murphy. Murphy would be the easier route because I think they'll stand up and bang with each other, and I think she has an advantage there. So I like that match for her a lot. But Chukagan obviously is the, you know, 1B of that. Well, I won't even say 1B. She's obviously the no, number one, number two in that division because she's killing everyone. 
But that's a little bit of a tougher fight for her. But I think she can win either one of those. Facts. I, I like. I mean, she she's showing a lot of improvement, and I think she's you know she's peaking at the right time, man. She's putting on. My thing for MMA, man, is if if you can put together four straight, you're 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 knocking on the door. You you you're going to be getting a new contract or a title fight. So she put together four. She put together a nice little win streak. She's in the top five. That's all good for Alexa Grasso. I, I love it. Yeah, I think if she wins one more fight, she gets the winner of the next title fight, which is Shevchenko versus Santos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she'll get the winner of that bout. <laughs> Shevchenko. Depending on how, <laughs> yeah, how yeah. who wins, I feel. Yeah. She deserves it. Yeah, because if Shevchenko advantage. loses, she's... Yeah. I want to give an Ashy Knuckle. I want to give an Ashy Knuckle shout out for Ashy Knuckle moment of the card, in my opinion. Um, on the prelims, there was a bantamweight bout between uh, Bajarel Donna and uh, Chris Gutierrez. I think I said that right, but uh, Chris Gutierrez got the knockout, little performance of the night, knockout. That was that was awesome. Chef's kiss to the boy. Ash Knuckles moment to me. Go oh, ahead, yeah, I see you, Chris. That was a spinning back fist, right? Yes. Yeah. That was beautiful. Dude, mine's mine's for uh Curtis Blades. Straight up. Hey, hey, I really thought you was playing around when you said he um had a speech impediment. No. I, I, I was... didn't know that. I really didn't know <laughs> that. And then I heard it and I was like, Oh, they weren't joking. I thought they were just Messing with it, and now like, oh, wait! You never heard any of his post fight like I did, speeches? but I didn't retain them until oh, okay. I heard this one. And you know, I, I I had a friend that had a problem like that before, and but he told me the problem with him is uh he thinks too fast, so he can't say what he's thinking as fast, and it's yeah. probably the same thing as Curtis Blades. But speaking of this guy, he knocked that guy's eyeball out. Yeah. yeah, I think he punched his ticket to a champ to a a championship bout. That shit was fucking that 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 was that was mean. I didn't expect that. That's all. I caught, it caught me definitely off guard. I mean, we all I was gonna, gonna get past him, but not like that, right? Not like that. Well, right. Just like well, just like um, was um, what's your name again? Grasso. We thought Grasso would beat Wood, but not by submission. I didn't. I thought, yeah, yeah. I did not think. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't think he was going to drop him with one shot, like a boxing shot. No, I didn't think that was going to happen. But I mean, shot, good shit for Curtis, man. Like, um, he's like he's in that same spot to me. Um, well, not same spot, but I guess he's young and similar to like we mentioned with Dakasi when he had the uh, he put it on film that look, I'm capable of just wrestling you to victory. So now, like, his opponents have something else they got to think about when game planning for him. Same was with uh, Chris and with, um, Curtis Blades. Now, like, he can – he's showing that, look, I I can at least get it done standing up. He's part of the uh, – you remember we talked about this with the heavyweights before. He's part of the young guys. Ty Tuovasa wasn't up there before, but we were talking about uh, Surreal, Francis, Tom Aspinall. Uh, possibly Rosenstruck, all these young dudes. Well, I don't think Rosenstruck's that young, is he? But I'm pretty sure it was. It was neither, um, neither. It was Curtis Blades, Gon, and Naganu. For sure. Yeah, I don't think France, Francis is not that young either. We were Francis talking about gone. those dudes was all gonna be. They're all probably gonna meet up more than once. Yeah, at I think, that time Francis was pretty young. But I think, um, especially in his career. Well, Curtis is what 30, 30 something, thirty two, thirty two, thirty. Yeah, thirty-two. I think they're young for heavyweights. Well, because I know, like, and then if you think about like Gon and Aspinall, Gon's in his early thirties as well, right? I believe so. Aspinall okay. might be on the other side of thirty. I don't think he's thirty yet. Could be wrong. He, he might be in, in his twenties, late twenties. Okay. I don't think he's like twenty-two or something. Yeah, I, I, twenty-eight. I guess the I guess the whole point. Well, then, yeah, it's the same little cluster, and they all in similar age group. The whole point I was trying to make is that um, 
he, Curtis put some tape on now that he can stay. He got legit. I mean, his stand ups improved. He, I mean, he's always looked like okay, but his issue was more mixing it up, like mixing in the striking to, to set up the takedowns. He didn't even attempt any takedowns against Dawkins. And that's what I, I was expecting. That was expecting that because Dawkins is known for his striking, his boxing particularly. That's like his his thing. And to see him get knocked out by it, like his method is like shocking to me. He might have did MMA math, but in his favor with uh, different formulas because he probably felt like he had the better stand up against Derek Lewis and Derek Lewis knocked out Dawkins. So he probably put X as him and then did carry the uh the Y and Z. <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. That's MMA math. He probably looked at it like that. Like my stand up was good enough against Derek Lewis that I decided to wrestle. And this guy's wasn't. So I'm just gonna stand up with him and see what happens. Well, since we're on the subject of heavyweights, and we we obviously know like Francis Francis is the guy, but he got like some contract shit going on with uh, UFC right now, so we might be looking at an interim title shot you know, for they somebody. Got quiet with it, they haven't been talking about it as much. Not just that, nice in that too. I think you know, they might have reached something, but they don't want to. You know, they're holding cards to their chest. They don't well, yeah. Yet. What I will say is this, at Chris, I mean, Curtis called out Gone for the interim title shot. And someone Curtis, else. He, no, he called out Gone. He, he said, he saw Stipe in the crowd. He's like, Stipe, you're a great champion. And someday, you know, I want to be, I want to have a career like yours. And uh, Stipe was there. He showed up. So I'm assuming that he's going to be in action at some point soon. And John ain't tweeting right now. He's only posting like workout videos and like training videos. So he might be working on. Uh, I think him and Stipe might be linked for something. Stipe gave a thumbs up. I was going to agree with that. Back. What's up? Pictures. I was about to say, Stipe was uninterested. He was trying to walk out. He did this, <laughs> took some pictures, and said peace. He took his breath. Right. He chugged his beer, said OH, IO, one more time, and then. I don't remember who quoted it. I don't remember who quoted it, but they said Stipe had the ultimate dad moment trying to leave before the crowd. <laughs> trying, to, trying to beat traffic? Trying to beat traffic. <laughs> but it was during the interview. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, was, I will say this. As a fan, I'm more interested in seeing uh, Jones Stipe. If, if we're going to do Me an too. interim title, I mean... I f- still feel like they just got to work out something with Francis because it doesn't make any sense. But if not, then, yeah, I, w- I would like to see, you know, Stipe. And I would definitely like to see Stipe Jones. I want to see Jones at heavyweight at hope sooner sooner rather than later. And I think that's going to happen. I feel like it's now or never, really. I mean, he's, I don't think he's going to take three years off the sport to bulk up. And well, make a I mean... I thought he was coming back in He didn't summer. take three didn't years off the sport. What's up? He had a match last year, man. He fought last year. It was early last year, right? Like February? March? January? Who, Jones? Yeah. No, no, it was late last year in the hotel room. He's talking about the... Come on, man. That's, wait, wait. I didn't respond for a reason. I know damn well... I only he's brought it up because he's trying to throw uh, Chael Sonnen under the bus over that shit, and it's a completely different situation. One guy's a piece of shit. The other guy was defending his wife. Just saying. I think he's saying that the attention it gets. It's like one is just a, a mention. His shit's a saga. You well, know what I mean? They, they talk about it. They talk about the Chael Sonnen situation. But A, Chael Sonnen knows how to shut up about his own situations and doesn't bring more attention to it, which John Jones cannot do. He he gets fucking on Twitter. And then B, we know that Chael Sonnen was doing something defending his wife. And 
<clears throat> John Jones has done nothing but terrible things and try to act like a good boy about it. Um, no denying but, Jones is a fucker. Like, he does some yeah. fucked up shit. No denying that. I mean, that's pretty clear. Um, but some of like, there's a lot of athletes that get into shit outside of fighting, but it's not like a constant highlight of what they their career. It's 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 like a, just a small blurb. Cause like even like our our boy Connor, he got like all types of fucking allegations, and it's not a, in a constant news cycle. It is a mention and then move on. Like he punches the old man, mention it, move on. Like it's not constantly talked about by other um, people that cover the sport. Like you don't constantly hear Chael Sonnen dragging McGregor's name through the mud with his past things, even though he has them, and he has some current, he has some current things too. You know what I mean? The difference in that situation is also the same, though, because Conor McGregor, when he does something wrong, do you ever hear Conor McGregor talk about those things that he did wrong? No. He's quiet about it. He doesn't bring it up. John Jones brings up his own situation and seeks sympathy for every little damn thing that he does on Twitter. Like, he's his own media bringing that shit up all the time. He does it himself. Because, like, when, when situations like this happen, where with the whole Chael Sonnen situation, nobody was talking about John Jones' situation anymore. But he brought it up himself again. He brought it up, oh, well, you know what? When I went through this, you know, y'all want to talk shit and do all this stuff. But when he's going through this, whatever. We were already over it. We moved on. You brought it up. He's just looking so, for validation, man. Correct. That's what I mean. Everyone else is quiet about it. They let it pass. He decides to bring it up. He brings more attention to it and then tries to play the victim on like, oh, y'all are so mean to me. Besides I, him doing all this nonsense outside of the octagon, him inside the octagon is a different story. Correct, and Stipe is the best fight for him. That's, Period. that's the fight that I would love to see before he fights Francis because mm -hmm. I don't want him... To just go in there and he gets just annihilated. You know, I'd rather see a preview of what we can expect out of a heavyweight John Jones. You get what I'm saying? Because we already know what we're going to get out of Francis. We're either going to get this uh, NCAA wrestler or we're going to get like the best knockout artist the heavyweight division's ever seen. You know what I mean? One of the two. But I want to see how John Jones fares against an actual heavyweight. And Stipe, he has the credentials. That's that's a super fight right there for International Fight Week if it happens. Yeah, I'm 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 Great. definitely I'm 100 percent interested in that. I want to see I want to see Jones at heavyweight. Period. Um, and I can't wait to see Stipe back in there. So I think that's a perfect, you got a perfect combination. And that can be a, a pretty legendary fight. I can see it in being um, one of those fights that look, we look back on and be like, yo, we're happy that we got to have this fight uh, in in the UFC. Because like, sometimes, like, you know, we there's matchups that we want to see, but for whatever reason, they never go through. Um, obviously, the most famous one is uh, Ferguson and Habib. But... I definitely want to see Jones just get back in the cage. Uh, I'm personally not too tied into anybody's outside of their whatever. For, for me, it's entertainment, right? I don't give a shit what they're doing outside of the, in their real lives. Like, not, not even a little bit. I mean, I can't. I can compartmentalize. Like, I'm watching this for entertainment, not to follow this person's lead as a role model. Like, I don't. I, I don't personally like care. But I think it is um it's, it's something you can't ignore because like it's it happens. Like it's it's a they're public figure. So whenever something does happen, that does become a, a talking point. Um hey, I, 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 hey, wait, wait. I do believe if John Jones had never messed up at all, we would have MMA in the Olympics. He'd be on the Wheaties box, he'd be say if he was like Cormier. With, you know, just the perfect athlete, you know, not perfect, but, you know, just not yeah. in the news 
with issues, getting arrested or whatnot. I right. feel MMA would be eventually in the Olympics a lot closer than what it is now. He would be yeah, if, the person. If he's like a model citizen, right? Yes. I think, but I also think this. Um, I think the fact that he is wild, that he is um, unpredictable and super, like, reckless is the reason why he's so good as a fighter like i think that it, it in that business it takes a certain amount of chaos to be able to destroy people like he does like you we saw from his career i mean yeah um ideally fuck yeah you would want him to have that clean cut um face or if anything him just own it and be like i am an asshole fuck all y'all and then, like, be this complete tyrant. I think he leaned into it and didn't, like, like Mark said, like, fish for, like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, you know, like, it's not if he just leaned into it. That, though. First time he did yeah. what? Ask for forgiveness. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, if he just right. leaned into it, like, he was, like, just a complete heel, bad guy. Like, oh, just complete bad guy. Forever. Just the heel. Correct. Like, yeah, like, just like, no, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. I hit that. I was high. I fucking hit that that fucking car. Fuck that car. Fuck them kids. Like if he, if he took right. that more more like like straight ownership of all that and just was like I am I'm wild and I'm a, I'm a bad motherfucker or whatever. I think that would be um he would be a little bit more um kind of like accepted by the media types because then they're like what are you gonna say to him? He's like in the same mode of like mold of a guy like Trump who he's like I don't give a fuck if I offended you what I said like. We gonna do the bad right boy of MMA, yeah. But the <laughs> right, but, yeah. It's almost like the uh, the situation with let's say Kobe Covington. Like even though we all know it's a stick, his his immediate fans eat that shit up. But and he owns it as who he is and doesn't apologize for the shit that he offends people for. He may call the fucking cops on you and press charges, but. He ain't, he ain't trying to, like, go back on anything he said. So, people accept it more. I mean, Conor McGregor is the same way. He ain't trying to apologize for hitting an old man in a bar or a DJ or anything like that. He just kind of moves on and is like, whatever. I'm going to be me. People accept it more. It's just the simple fact that he's trying to play a victim-esque card when he, he's doing all the wrong. Is the thing that people hate about him? I I would say, in my opinion, that's what I get annoyed with him because I can separate it too. I love watching Jones in the cage. I'm not his hugest personal fan, obviously, because I think he's just a not a great person. Same with Conor McGregor. I absolutely think that he has phenomenal skills. I do give Conor McGregor a little more of a hard time because I don't think he's as great as he thinks he is. John Jones is as good as he thinks he is. He's fantastic. He's one of the greatest fucking fighters of all time. Conor McGregor is not. That's where the separation is for me. You know, I can I can watch you in the cage all day long, but I'm still going to tell women to stay away from you because he's probably going to beat you in the hotel room too. Like, it's different for me. That's, that's, that's where I can be. <laughs> Speaking of greatest, like, uh, all time... If you would do an MMA, uh, like pioneers from each era, right? Who would represent this current era? Like the current era we're in right now. Who do you think is a front runner to represent that? Uh, definitely Connor. Connor. Ah, I'm not talking so about skills. Of the I'm not talking about skills. Okay. I'm talking of where it got to. Like what his impact on the sport? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody right now, unless you want to go with the women's MMA type of stuff, that you know that's different in a way, because you got several women that changed the game just from them having their own weight class, I guess you could say. But for impact on the sport right now, since what like twenty fifteen ish, it's Connor because. He literally was the reason why 
the sport turned into like I like to call it the entertainment era. Like we're in now. So if you go from 2012 to today, well, what? That 15, would be 15. Let's go 14, 15. 2015, 15. 14, 15. That's when he really started to like explode. Wait, let's 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 stretch it out for a decade, right? Let's get get a full 10 years and okay, and so go like the, the impact of the What's up? Oh, I was trying to think like 2012 in that era. In that decade, I was trying to think of who who I would choose in that situation. Uh, so from 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 present moment to like ten years ago. Let's go five. Let's go five. Five years ago. Okay, if it's five years ago, then I think Connor's kind of irrelevant. That's what I was gonna say. Because like if if we're going that short of if if it was 2012 to 22, Connor is the man. But I think we're phasing out of Connor right now and entering the Izzy era. To be honest, I for, think we're for, entering the Izzy era for that and phasing out Connor. It's still the for same approach. Name wise. In a way. It's still the same approach, in a way. Well, Correct. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go with a uh, same. I'm, I'm going to go with a different division. I think uh, Usman's the guy. If you're going to really go like with dominance, because he's, I mean, he's shown. I mean, he hasn't lost that 170. Oh, you talking? See, I was going with like who made an impact on the sport, right? Well, okay, like Connor changed the game to where yeah. now it's it's entertainment. He made it to where it, it he made it to where you can be a superstar mixed martial artist. Like you can be yes. a, like a, a, a you can make be uber wealthy too. Oh, but from skill the game, wise, Usman a thousand percent, and I hate to say right. it, Volkanovski. Okay, and then I would obviously still pick Usman over Volkanovski, but yeah, I would say no, they're right there. Those the only I feel are pound for pound. The only alternative that I would put out of all that, because I, I feel for me, for me, I mean, I think Izzy's great, but he still needs to do do a lot do a lot more before I can put him edge him over Usman. The only other person in the entire sport, if we go in the last five years or ten years, that makes any real impact to me is Valentina Shevchenko. I think she's the most pure f- expression of MMA. Um, yeah, and, and she because she can do it all. Obviously, she's dominant in, in her division. She can do it all as far as you know, striking, um, grappling, mixing it up with submissions, ground and pound. She has all of it. She can do it all. Um, and although women's MMA in the UFC is relatively new, um, I think she's a her impact on the sport is going to be a big deal moving forward looking back at it um because she's going to open a window for our more female fighter more 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 greatness from female fighters because she set the benchmark now like you know what the the best expression of mixed martial arts looks like when it comes to um the women's division and she's it in my opinion Mm -hmm. everybody that's all the younger people looking up, all the younger girls that are coming into the sport are going to have to match her energy or exceed her what she's doing. I think she's going to – she has the biggest impact, Valentina. If you, you can already see that. Uh, with the amount of interviews and talks that Rose Nam Yunez has had saying that she tries to structure her game and her, her dominance – from Valentina, where she's already inspiring current fighters to be better. Yeah, I agree with that. It's just this whole discussion I kind of want to section, have different sections for, because I do agree that Izzy for mainstream media and eyes on the sport-wise is revolutionizing it right now. I would say he's the best in this time frame right now. Uh, If you want to say pure skill-wise then, yeah, I'd probably put Usman there. And then for the female Shevchenko, they're obviously the most inspirational and changing the game the most right now. But there's different sections to me. But if you want to just say actually affect on the sport the most right now, I would say that would probably be Izzy. Yeah. I think Izzy Izzy has that – he's that polarizing figure where you you look at – he, he he brings eyes to the sport because he's 
he's not just great in the cage. He's entertaining outside. Like mm-hmm. even his walkouts are entertaining. His uh, his media, his trash, like all everything he's doing leading up to the fight, just to make the fight um like to to market it. It's also um must what must see TV. Even him just watching fights and reacting to them is like must watch. So he does have that impact from that that aspect. Um, and, yeah. and obviously, if you're going to go like more than ten years, if you want to go more than a decade. Yeah, Connor changed a lot, man. Connor definitely has. Um, I mean, every guy that's now cranking it up with the trash talk and cranking it up with the chasing boxing fights, um, I was and like champ champ status, they're all barring from Connor's playbook. So his 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 impact on the sport is undeniable. You remember for you know, a while back in the day, they weren't like calling out somebody after every fight when they had a, a chance for an interview. They weren't calling nobody out. Unless it was like a number one contender fight, now it's like every time somebody's on the mic, they're calling out somebody. It's the new normal. It's like if you if you don't if you don't call somebody out, it's kind of weird. It's like okay, well, do you want to get to the title shot or do you want to get um a, a match? You do you want to get a big matchup? Because if you if you the, the, the fighters that say I'll leave it up to the UFC's the matchmakers' hands, I mean, yeah. If you're just like undeniable and you're wiping the floor with everybody, that could work. But if you're not, being able to call your shot and like you know say, okay, I I, I had this performance. I'm looking to get into the top ten. I want I choose you, Pikachu. You know, hey. like I think that's the better me- uh, method. Hey. Better. Since we've been talking about Izzy, let's go into some uh, chit chat. Some other chit chat. How about okay. Pereira against what's his name? Sean, Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland. Yes, yeah. yes. What do you guys feel about that fight? Are they pushing Pereira hard to get up there to fight Izzy? Because you, I'm pretty sure if he beats, like if he knocks out Strickland, title shot. Yeah, because Strickland's at that yeah. that spot to where. Okay, this dude's on this win streak, right? Mm-hmm. But then you got this guy with the history, mm-hmm. so you know they're gonna market it, something like that. You know the UFC could do whatever they want. Oh yeah, and he's gonna leapfrog. Let me look at it. Let me see. I mean, so who's is he matched up with now? He's he's he has um. He's gonna Cannoneer. leapfrog a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, after Cannoneer, if Izzy wins, he's gonna well, leapfrog all of them. Because they're well, tied for fourth place still. Well, yeah. here's the thing. So we look at look at the top, right? Like Izzy's already yeah. fought Rob twice. He's already um Vittori fought uh, correct. And they're the top guys in the in the division. So they're not it's not like um he's really leapfrog leapfrogging anyone. I mean, they already had their shots. And then the only guy that hasn't had his shot yet is um the current matchup. Like we, we he is he, I mean Cannonier hasn't had a crack at the title all because he lost to Rob, you know. So he's now put himself back in position to get a, position to get a, a shot at the title. I feel like Sean Strickland is was a, a fighter or two away anyway. So if he was to win this one, you know, let me get this straight. They've been tied for fourth place for how many weeks now? You Neither know of them done anything. But still, like, why are they tied for fourth place? Who? Brunson, uh, Paul Costa, Costa and, and Strickland. Well, no, they're not yeah. fighting. Like, no, none of them have a, a match. Like, Brunson just lost to Cannoneer, and but why are they tied? Oh, you mean like ranking? Because the ranking rankings, I mean, doesn't, doesn't make it's sense. It's so but. funny to me. They're four, four. The four. reason why they're tied is because right now Costa's not doing anything, so you don't really know what to do with him. He could be moving. Brunson on. just lost. He could be so number you don't, four. He could be number four, but you know, I think Costa has a win over Brunson, right? Oh, yeah, but, but he oh. hasn't fought, so he hasn't really lost to anybody else. In that and then Sean Strickland just popped onto the scene where they want him in that top five talk, but <laughs> he hasn't proven him himself. Yeah, so he hasn't really proved himself. To be better than Brunson or 
Costa yet. So they're just like, you know what? We're just going to put this in a four-way match. And I honestly think the Pereira fight is the safest bet for the UFC. I think it's a very safe bet for the UFC because you get a win-win out of that. If Strickland wins that fight, he's the next up for the title shot, 100%. If Pereira wins that fight, you can spin that story till next year and give him the title shot if Izzy wins also. So he's right in the mix right there. But if Strickland loses, or I mean if Pereira loses that fight, he's not even ranked right now. So it doesn't do anything to his career. It's a fight he should lose. The only person that's actually in a shitty situation right here is Sean Strickland himself. Because if he loses this fight, that hurts. I bet you they told him you win, you get a title shot. Yeah. So he's got he's got the ultimate like prize on one end of it and you know, fear of falling out of top ten on the other end. So <laughs> They, I like he's got all the pressure. I think Alex Pereira is in the same position as Hamzat Chemaev because, I mean, Hamzat has completely dominated everybody that you put in front of him so far. He hasn't fought a ton of uh, like highly ranked guys, but his next test is up against number two in Gilbert Burns. And right. he, he wins. If he wipes the floor with Gilbert, I mean – you, you match him up with Kobe, maybe, because Kobe's a clear-cut number one. And then, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, he beats Kobe. He's undeniable for the title shot, even though he has, he doesn't have a load of t- top-ranked wins. He will, at that point, only have two. But Strickland, on the other hand, you know, he has his streak going. Um, sorry, that, that, oh, this actually wasn't for Strickland. Um, Alex Pereira is in the same boat because, like, he's unranked. He's looked good against, you know, everyone they match him up against. And now he's going from unranked and most of the opponents being um, outside of the top 15 to now his he's fighting a guy in the top three. Right? Oh, four, 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 top four. To that. Well, top, well, top four. Yeah, top four. Top four. One of the top three top fours. Right. So uh. if he, Yeah. So if he beats Strickland, now it's like, okay, we already know he came to the UFC because of the his kickboxing prowess and the fact that he has this history with Adesanya of beating Izzy, beating Izzy twice. That there's all that's, that's clear. So the, this is the this is the same storyline that they tried to push with Joseph Duffy. There there was no reason for Joseph Duffy to really be in the UFC other than he had a win over Conor McGregor. And they tried to push him when he first came over because he had a win over Conor McGregor, and Conor McGregor was the biggest thing there there was at the time. So it's the same story. But the only pushback I have against your Chemaev situation is I don't think Pereira has looked that great in his two fights. He's had two fights in the UFC, right? I thought, yeah, it, was, I think, I thought, I thought it was three. I could be wrong though. Maybe three. Yeah. But no, I don't the two fights that I saw with him in it, he didn't look that great to me. He looked like he was struggling a little bit, and I thought the uh the trying to shoot him up to fight Izzy already was a terrible matchup. So I at least Chemayev is dominating, dominating whoever they put in front of him. Pereira, I don't think, is on that same level. But with Izzy already having the fact that he's ran through the division for the most part, they need people up there. So they're they're gonna, like I said, it's a safe bet for them. Fast forward. If he beats, yeah, it's a fast forward. It's a safe bet for the UFC. And well, I think Pereira also knows that the only reason why he's there is because of Izzy. So okay, there you go. So, um. So he got the the Mark the Bruno Silva fight was a a good fight. Um, he got, that was you know, it was a you know, UD right for uh, mm. Pereira, and then before that he got the flying knee KO second round. Um, and he's only two fights in, but 
I I think his like you said the fact that he's like linked to the champ is the reason and plus he's winning like he's it's not like I mean it's, it's, he he's only five he only has six MMA fights yeah. That's what I'm saying. They're trying to push it a little quicker than I think they should because I didn't think he looked that dominant or impressive. He did get the wins and he got that flying knee and what's whatever, but I don't... I, I feel like all three of us have a way of like looking at some of these upcoming prospects and kind of judging in a decent know-how of how far they can go right off the bat compared to the competition that they're at. I don't think that the competition... He didn't make that competition look terrible enough to where I think he needs to be in the top 10 already. That's all I'm saying. If you want to try to push to get him in the top 15, I think that's somewhere where he should be trying to strive for. I don't think that he should be top 10 already, but I understand why they're doing it. Well, Alex, Alex Pereira isn't young. He's, 30, he's 34 years no. old. Hey, let's look so, at it from a right. matchup perspective, though. Does Sean Strickland wrestle? Because every fight I see him is just volume striking. Does he wrestle? How's his grappling? Not when Strickland can, but he doesn't. It's all volume, right? Mm-hmm. So, Mick Maynard, right? That's the, the guy right now? The matchup right. guy? Mm-hmm. Depends on the uh, weight class, but yeah. He probably sees this as, okay, I got to get Izzy some new blood up there and this is the best shot probably because paulo costa's a nut job right now Derek brunson mm-hmm. is just going to scoop this man to the floor whitaker and vittoria is already booked makes sense right because mm-hmm. you want this guy to get a fast track to the top strickland's hot right now you know yeah best shot that's what I was saying. It's a safe bet no matter what for the UFC. Yeah. They win all the scenarios in this fight. Period. You either get the hot commodity of Strickland fighting for the title next, or you get the story of a lifetime. Because Pereira has, what, two or three knockouts of... Uh, he has one knockout. I know he beat Izzy at least twice. Yeah. Decision so. and knockout. Like, it was a clean knockout, too. Yeah. Like, Pereira got one a I nasty understand. left hook. That's yeah, all he does. Say. He got a nasty left hook, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, he hit sure. hard. That's all I got to say. He hit hard. So, it's, it, it'll probably be, like, a really good matchup. Because I don't see Izzy wrestling and going for takedowns. I mean, you never know, though. You never know. If, if you watch what happens, even the fight he got knocked out, and Izzy looked really good in that, in that fight. You know yeah. what I mean? But he got knocked out, so I mean, the I don't know. I don't go. I don't give too much credence in the. I don't give too much um, credit for like, oh well, you were winning and then you lost. Like, it doesn't matter. You lost. Well, he lost prior to that too, to decision. So this yeah. guy, he might be Izzy's Buster Douglas. You get what I'm saying? But it's also a different thing. This is MMA now. This, this is not a kickboxing fight. They're going to fight the same way. Maybe, but it's just different elements now. Like, there's different rules, different skill sets. You know what I mean? Like, there is, but so, I see the same fight happening. But yeah. I think Izzy probably got a lot better. He's more accustomed to this rule set. to where he's that's what, that's what I, I want to say where the difference is going to be versus those two is that was originally a kickboxing, kickboxing fight. Big gloves and all, right? Yes. I think the biggest difference in this fight, even though I think it will be a stand-up kickboxing type fight, is going to be the clinch and cage, which Izzy's going to dominate on both of those. That's period. How I feel too. So I think Izzy 100% has the advantage in this fight. If the fight goes to the ground, I'll be surprised. Yeah, I don't think it will. Like, I'll Does Izzy ever take down anybody? If it goes to the ground, I'm about to eat some shrimp. If Izzy takes them down, I'm about to eat some shrimp. I'll take that allergic reaction one time. No, no I don't want to die. <laughs> Let me stop myself. Hey, man. 
Um, who's saying it's gonna be Izzy that's gonna be doing the grappling? Um, Alex Pereira is working out with Team to share MMA. He's with Glover, mm -hmm. so you, you. I mean, you're assuming that he's just gonna be the one that wants to stand up and go for the knockout. I think the stand up edge is Izzy. If I'm just watching how Pereira performs in MMA, in kickboxing he looks phenomenal. In MMA yeah. he looks kind of ordinary. Like his striking, yeah. look, his, his striking doesn't look like anything to be. Uh, I obviously think like I mean yes he has a mean ass left hook. Great, look. his left hand is sharp. The meanest. But but what but watching him like I don't, I'm not like wild by his stand up prowess. Other than that. Like he he has the tools, and he has the size. Dude, six foot four, bro. And you know what I mean? Like same height. Yeah. Ooh. You know what I mean? Like he. Yeah, you know they want to build this shit up. You know they. Yeah, do. they do. You know they do. You know they do. It's going to be the most interesting story period in middleweight right now. You Facts. know they do, bro. You know they. Come. I mean, think about it. I mean, they... gonna be one A forever. Right. He's probably going to just bop for Tori. Like, straight up. He's going to bop him. He's going to be stuck in the same spot. He's going to be in limbo. Well, I mean, there's a reason they bought this guy in. They, they bought this guy in for a reason. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're Joe Satuffying sure. it. Like I said, sure. he's only here because of Izzy. The same right. as uh, Joseph Duffy was for, Con or for Conor McGregor and... God, who was that guy that they brought in for DC? Oh my God, uh, Cunningham? No, no, what's his name? Yeah, Patrick Cunningham. The only Cummings. reason why any That's of these name. Cunning, Cummings, Cummings, Patrick Cummings, Cummings. Yes. yes. Yeah, Patrick that Cummings. Guy. Guy. The only reason why all three of those guys got UFC contracts were because the champion at the time needed of someone to fight, and they had a story behind it. Yeah, but this is a this is a hell of a story because he got. Two wins over the current champ. And no matter how you slice it, especially in the eyes of like the spectators, they'll be like, look, this guy has beaten the champ two times. So regardless of how you feel about their growth, how their matchups, when, when, none of that one-on-one, -on -one, he's won already. He already has two wins over him. So that's an easy sell as opposed to all the rematches that Izzy would have at middleweight. I mean, even – right. Strickland is surgeon, though, so – I mean, it's, it's, perfect. it's perfect. Perfect matchup. Yeah. Perfect matchup. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's good, good matchup. I think it's good for the middleweight division. No, he hasn't fought Costa yet to answer that question. Um, Whitaker, right? He hasn't fought Costa, right? No. He's only got. He, no, yeah. He's he's getting Vittori next, though. That's the only other guy he hasn't faced in the middleweight. June? June, right? I don't know the date. I think it's June. It is June, June 11th. It's I the think. same one with uh, Yuri and Glover and Valentina and Shevchenko. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That card's looking pretty stacked right now, too, yeah. All right, so besides that, let's talk about this uh, fight that happened over the weekend. Early Ooh, yeah. weekend. Early morning. Mm -hmm. For the early birds. This one was I, I didn't watch the card. I didn't watch the card. I just watched one fight. I watched two rounds. That's all I watched. It, did, it only, did it only last two rounds? We said it would go two rounds. I'm for sure said submission. Like, hey, second round, Mighty Mouse submission. Yeah, I think that fight went exactly how everyone expected it to go. Uh... You know, first round, this was a four-round fight, and they were going to swap rule sets between kickboxing and MMA. First round kickboxing, second round MMA, back and forth, whatever. And it went exactly how we all expected it to go. Rodan came out, and he was aggressive as hell. Aggressive as hell. And throwing bombs in the first round. With kickboxing and you know DJ didn't exactly back away from him he went in there he was gonna he slung with him I thought DJ was gonna be a lot more of a defensive on the outs trying to survive the first round a little bit more but he he dug in he hit uh, Rotang with some heavy shots which Rotang has a chin like a motherfucker I'm just saying they were scrapping they were scrapping in that first round 
But was, obviously, Rod Tang was ahead. Yo, that was that was spectacular. Like, oh my god, it was a great fight. Just the first round, in my oh, yeah. opinion. First round, like, oh shit, Mighty Mouse hanging in there. Okay, okay, right. I'm over here yelling USA, USA. People at work looking at me like, if I'm, what's wrong with this dude? I got one dude with me watching the fight. He don't even know who the other guy is. He called him Wu Tang. And I'm just like, nah, nah, his name's Rod Tang, not Wu Tang. And he's like, oh, yeah, this dude, he's, he's good. He's he got some power. I'm like, yeah, but Mighty Mouse. He's like, yeah, go Mighty Mouse. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and we watching this thing like it's on some bootleg internet, which it was. <laughs> But the second round happens, and I told him, bro, it's time. And it was time. You know, I was actually worried in the second round because when going into this fight, I didn't know they were going to do three-minute rounds for every round. So it was four three-minute rounds. And, you know, Demetrius got to his takedown pretty early on. I think it took him a minute to get to it, but he got to his first takedown about a minute in. So he had two minutes to work. Rotten was actually defending his defense was solid. The choke. His defense was solid. Well. His defense exactly. was solid. Like he wasn't perfect, but it's not something you would have expected a kickboxer to defend so well. And Mouse went yeah. for, what, three attempts in that round with it? Because he had to keep, three attempts. He had to keep going from arm to arm with it, right? He right. To... He had the back the whole time, but he had to go he had to readjust yep. at least three times. Three different times. It, it turned from a neck crank, defended the neck crank, went back in for it, didn't really have a good hold on it, had to come out and then go back into it, and then he had, he sunk it in like a motherfucker at that point. Yeah, uh, Rod Tang went to sleep. Yes. There's, He's like, I ain't tap no shit. Tap, no taps. No taps. That was I, spectacular, I feel. Like, they should do more of those. I had, um... Yeah. Mighty Mouse by an armbar. I said submission. Second round. No care. No fucks. It's happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jokingly, I said Rod Tang by submission, but I already knew that wasn't really going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but um, since you watched the, the main card, how was yes. the women's, the, the main, the main event? How was that fight? The main event, yeah, Angela Lee fight? versus Stamp. How was that fight? Amazing. It was it was a barn burner the whole time through. Uh, Angela Lee came out there because Stamp Fairtex is a kickboxer herself also, and she's a fantastic kickboxer. Like, she is amazing. Angela Lee's more of a well-rounded but more of a submission artist herself, so, you know, it's the old-school grappling versus striking type matchup. But Angela Lee came out aggressive herself and she was holding her own in the striking got hit with a nasty body shot that almost crippled her like she she literally grabbed her stomach curled over and ran backwards to try to survive ended up surviving and in the second round came out with the dominant grappling that she does but same thing stamp fair uh her she showed a little bit of inexperience on the ground, but her grappling was above the level that I thought it would be. And, you know, they're both two people that I would love to see in the UFC. I know this was an atom weight fight, so we're going to have a uh, karate hottie situation. Uh, but I would love to see them both in the UFC and see how well they do. I think they're both top 10, if not top 5 competitors. I think they struggle with certain matchups, though. So the 105 pound division, right? The atom weights. So yeah, they're fighting currently at 105, but at 115, I think they can easily become top 10 and be big challengers and names in the division. I do think that uh, Rose Namunez or Joanna would be a little too much for either of them, but. Like I said, it would be a karate hottie situation where she was dominant at atom weight, came into straw weight, shows a good showing, but never fully gets to that pinnacle again. 
is it like a case where I'm trying to think like you know when you got these dominant champions in the other div- divisions not divisions but organizations coming over the UFC and they don't do too well and then they get cut and then they go somewhere else and they eventually do well same thing no I think by what I'm saying in this situation I think it's purely a size situation I think they come over and their skill like both of their skill sets right now could compete with the best in the UFC at 115 but size wise I think they struggle they will struggle a little bit like Mighty Mouse at Bantamweight before Flyweight came available right correct okay you know I think that's how it would be but Angela Lee Coming off two years and having two kids and not fighting that whole time, coming into a fucking barn burner of a fight for the, her championship. Yeah. She's legit. Her whole family's legit. All right, guys. You guys uh, got anything else you want to talk about today? I'm really interested. I would be really interested to see DJ versus Figgy or uh, Brandon Moreno. Mm-hmm. My goodness. I love it. I, I like, uh, well, dang. I'm still going off of old school Brandon Moreno. Because if you think about it, bro, he's just having this really good matchup right now against Figgy, right? Mm-hmm. Old school Brandon Moreno. It, I mean, who's to say you can't get better, right? He probably improved his skill set tremendously for the love of the game. So, I can't really say he'll get bopped by uh, Mighty Mouse. These are some really good matchups for uh, Mighty Mouse to come back to, honestly. All of these guys. Yeah. He's not just going to run through them. I don't see it. I, just, I really don't see it. He might get slept by Figgy, straight up. He might go night-night. And I love Mighty Mouse. Who do you think gives him the, the toughest challenge um, out of the the guys we mentioned? Like out of Figgy, um, Moreno, Kai Car, France. Who do you think gives um, DJ the, the the toughest time? I don't know, man. This your, is your opinion. Like, what do you think? Moreno's so durable. Like that dude's just not gonna give up. Figgy might just knock him out, but he can get tired. It's like so many different points that you could go with it. Kai Kara, same thing with Kai. Kai might be, in my opinion, the easiest matchup for him. For Mighty I, was say, I think he walks through Kai, to be honest. Yeah, but that's why I say he's the easiest matchup. But yeah. Moreno and, F- and Figgy, bro. Oh, man. You just don't it's so know. funny. There's these, it's so these funny. points with everything. There's points with everything. I feel yeah. almost the exact opposite. <laughs> I think he runs through both Figgy and Moreno. Because like you said like, the durability issues with Figgy. I think uh, if, if he not durability, but like his like gas tank, yeah, like gas if, he start, tank. If, if he starts to slow down against um, DJ, like I think DJ will even have a game plan to make sure that he is sapped of his energy by third round and just squeeze his ass out. But he could go night night. I mean, you don't say yeah, that, that about too many flyweights. Well, Kai Kara has power. He got, he saw he did the guard, Brett. The only yeah, reason I'm saying but, that is because. I'm teasing. Kai Kara, he, he's there now. He just got to prove it. That's how I see it. He's got to prove well, it one the more reason, time. The reason why I say he, he dominates Kai Kara France is for two reasons. Uh, DJ still has a chin like a motherfucker, as we saw with Rod Tang. Because Rod Tang hit him with fucking bombs that he, did. he should not be standing from. He did. Uh, and I don't think that Kai Kara France is anywhere near Rod Tang's uh, capabilities in stand-up wise and I don't think that if DJ took down Kai Car France I don't think Kai Car France is getting up I don't think it's happening I don't think he'll get up now Wait, when it comes to Brandon Moreno I think that's the best matchup right there because I think he can scramble out and they can stand up but I also think that DJ might outstrike him because he's more I, tactical. I think DJ is better than Moreno in every facet. Um, yeah. When, when it comes to but when 
But when it comes to Kai Carl France, didn't he just face a dominant wrestler in Askarov? It, 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 that's like, isn't yeah. that Askarov's MO? He got him down and he was able to get up, right? Yeah, but I, there's just another level to DJ to me. You said that's his MO. He probably prepared yeah. for that. With DJ, you're going to have to really train with all the aspects. That's what makes right. it so good. Right. right. Uh, I just, I don't see, I don't see him matching up that well. I think Moreno, the best part with Moreno is he can fight the submissions a lot better than most of the people in that divisions, or in that division, and he'll be willing to stand up with DJ, and he'll be able to take punishment from DJ. So therefore, I would think it would be more of a UD decision versus a finish in some of those other matchups. Like, I think he can finish Figgy because of the exhaustion. I don't think that Figgy can keep up with DJ's pace for five fucking rounds. It's not going to happen. I don't think he can. He might knock not him even, out, though, before Hey, man, not, not even three. He might not. He could knock him out. Him out. I mean, I think, all, I think Kai Carr could knock him out. Yeah, Kai uh, Carr could. It's all great matchups for I mean, just to come back, though. Not just mm-hmm. pure horsepower wise, but I mean actually setting up the shot. I think he's, a, he's he'd be better at setting up the shot than Figgy. Figgy just has a Figgy's all horsepower. He is in a uh, great camp too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But that's all I had. Over and one. DJ's only lost once, right? Was it once? And that was the championship fight. Yeah. The, was uh, it a little? The Brazilian cat that need him. Yeah, who well, also fought on one X, and he looked really fucking good that he fight won too. That even fight though too, the, right? yeah, even though everyone was booing the whole fight. Damn, it was. Yeah, they. Bruno something right? Bruno something. <laughs> was did he lose to Bruno also? Hold no, hold the Adriano Mor. Um, Adriano Moraes. That's his name, right? Yeah, yeah, that's his name. right. I don't know why I said but Bruno. Who fought Bruno? Even I don't know who fought Bruno. Patty. Patty fought what? Bruno Vargas? Bruno Silva. <laughs> Bruno Mars? One of them, right? Bruno Mars. I don't know. I don't know. Skate to me, baby. Skate. But yeah, even in that matchup, I feel like the only reason why DJ lost that matchup was because of a height and how big. Adriano is versus him. Well, you know the weight That's... cuts over there are non-existent. It's natural. Right. Well, he's also tall for that weight class. So, I think that's where he struggled a little bit. Also, But he's a good fighter, too. What? Rule sets, man. Yeah, rule sets. It didn't age well with uh, on the lead up to that fight. DJ was, was like, "Oh, out, bro," <laughs> from <laughs> a knee, and then next thing you know, like you, you said, or you were gonna say, "Blah blah blah," yeah. K O. <laughs> DJ that- was like, "I love knees to the ground," and he got knee to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna just quickly say this. When it comes to stuff like that, man, I, I, I'm I'm for it. I wish that that was not a rule, like the whole grounded thing. Like, you put yourself in a shot, a position to get need like that. So you should be able to get need. Still, you, know, you have a choice. You don't have to go to your one hand or put a... And they still have that to this day. Like, I, I swear, in this last... Uh, the last UFC, the fight night this past weekend, it was the... It was certain rules. I'm not sure if it was two hands have to be on the ground to be considered grounded or one hand. I forgot because it was at the start of the card. And I was like, that, that's dumb. And I was like, what? I thought it was two hands. But I think it was one hand considered to be grounded. Thankfully, nobody got kneed in the head on the ground to where it would be another discussion issue. But sooner or later, we'll eventually get to the point where you have unified rules. But we have unified rules. Commission rules. Who's part right. of the commission? 
You got like so that, somebody over in Wyoming that's deciding to throw an MMA event, and they got their own rules. You never know, right? the The problem with that situation is there is a unified MMA rules, and that rule set is two hands to the ground is down opponent, one is no longer. Um, or if I'm, I think I want to say two hands. two hands is yeah. the rule change. Because I think it's was, two hands or two point. What is this supposed to be? Uh, flat hands, right? Flat hands, so you can't just finger. Yeah, yeah. The because you remember uh, Weidman. It has to be a palm and a knee, or your knees down. You know, or two hands down. But we have that. But every commission can just be like, nah, we're gonna go with the one hand rule. So dumb. Hey. It is dumb. I don't see why they don't all just go by the same ones, but it is what it is. It is what it is. On that note, are you guys ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you like our content, don't be afraid to, you know, like, subscribe, send us some feedback. Um, you can hit me up at Ashy Knuckle. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm, um, we got to draw a blink there for a second. Um, <laughs> I'm B Woods at Ashley Knuckles MMA. Marky G is also on Twitter at um, Ashley Knuckles MMA. Marky G, is it all right, Marky G? I'm Ashley Marky G on Twitter. All right, and in, even in a, a YouTube comments, like uh, under our, our our YouTube um the, the channel for Ashley Knuckles MMA, you can give us leave some comments, some feedback, holla at us, man. Um, but you know we can just zip this shit up. Zip it up. Zip, zip it, it out. out. Zippy do that. Bye bye.